Hey, it's Gilbert Ferreira again from uh, Preserve Pigs, and welcome to this Q&A session today. Um, as I uh, explained to you in previous videos, uh, this is a series um, of Q&As, uh, questions that I draw from various meat curing forums and groups on the internet, as well as um, emails that I've received from our subscribers or other people who've come across the videos here and uh, I have the chance to read through the questions and then make videos and answer them and hopefully help you guys. If you do like the videos, then just click on the link below here to subscribe and you'll receive our, uh, our updated and new Q&A videos. And if you want to send through your questions, then again, here is the um, email address, questions at preservepix.com. Please feel free to send your questions to that. So I'm going to get straight into today's question. Um, the question was asked off uh, the the question is off the Aged and Cured Meat Facebook group that I administer. Um, in my last video, I told you about this uh, group. We have 39,000 uh, members, and the link will be in the description below, um, so that you can join this group if you haven't already joined and receive a lot of information and really great postings there from from members anyway let's get into the the question uh, it was uh, asked by michael ainsworth the question is accommodated with the attached photograph and it says my first copper it stayed in the curing chamber a bit longer than i wanted because i was overseas then it was three weeks of work catch up until i could get to our weekender i need not have worried it's certainly a little firm but it's sweet and tasty so it's not so much a question rather than me just having a look at it and really making some comments on this. And this is something that really does happen quite often. Um, we get busy with our lives and for some reason forget it to check our curing chambers or we're not able to check our curing chambers. And uh, things happen or can go wrong or might not, might not go wrong. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, two weeks ago, we came back from Italy. We'd been to Italy for a two week holiday. Um, I'd set up my curing chamber um, to make sure that uh, it should be okay while we're away. And when I got back, um, as soon as I got into Bluetooth uh, range of my curing chamber, I have a Go GoV uh, monitor inside there. It started beeping and it told me that my humidity was way too low. So when I got there and I opened the, the, the chamber, I noticed that my uh, humidifier wasn't working and uh, I took it out, plugged it in somewhere else, filled it with, you know, it was still filled with water and checked it again over and over and eventually I opened it up and checked inside and the fan had gone. So, you know, the fan that blew the mist up through the, through the um, funnel into the curing chamber, that had gone. So, you know, that's something that was completely out of my control. Luckily, I didn't have too much meat in there, but I do have a, a, a bracelet and I could feel immediately that there was some um, case hardening. Um, and if I look at this picture that uh, this gentleman sent in, um, if, you, if you look around the edges, you can see that that darker, almost black color is definitely some case hardening. And again, he mentioned here that um, it is certainly a little firm. So that would have been um, because more than likely um, there were humidity issues while he was away. And obviously nobody could have checked that. But luckily, this is not too much of a problem. It's something that can easily be rectified. Just a little bit of time and, and a, a little bit more patience. Um, and it's simply all that you do. We, we call it uh, um, re-equalizing or, or the equilibrium method where basically you remove the, the uh, piece of meat that has been cured from your chamber, in this case the copper, um, cut through it uh, to check the, the, the meat. And, and as you can see, I mean, the color on his meat inside is actually very good. Um, it's just that uh, little discoloration or the black around the edges. And all you do is you pop those pieces back into a vacuum bag, vacuum it tightly, uh, and, and you just dump it into your fridge. Now, generally, um, you, you could leave it for as long as you really wanted to because it's in a, in a vacuum, so nothing's going to happen to that meat. But what it does do is it allows um, the moisture to just uh, um, equalize throughout the whole piece of meat. And it does tend to help if you do have um, case hardening. Obviously, in cases where there has severe case hardening, which is that color of discoloration or the black coloring on the outside of the meat, um, you know, then it's going to be a problem. But in, in this case, I, I, I reckon if, if, if he puts that in a vacuum bag for, I'd say, three months, 
that meat would equalize beautifully and you'll have a, a, a you know a, a uniform color going right through that meat there won't be any of that hardening hardened bits and if there is it's slightly you can just shave those off on the edge and you've got beautiful even cured meat um, the nice thing about uh, uh, the equalization process is you can add additional flavors into the the um, vacuum bag before you seal it you can add a little bit of red wine um, in this case especially when there's a little bit of case hardening you might want to add a little bit of moisture just to help the effect so a little bit of red wine um, or a spirit that you like a brandy or something like that the guys experiment with vodkas or you can also add additional flavors like chilies or chili paste or something like that if you wanted to create a second level of flavors on your meat pop that into the bag vacuum seal it put it in your 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 meat um, draw in your fridge not your freezer in your fridge and just let it go and, and you can leave that from anywhere from a month up to a year to two years some people leave it in two three years and it matures beautifully um, you, you get a really nutty um, sort of umami flavor as, as a result of, of the aging of that meat and again it's like it's like the whole wine process where where wine is aged in the barrel and then it's uh, removed from the barrel and put into the bottle and then it's aged a second time in the bottle before it is then opened and, and drunk so it, it 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 just matures the wine and same here your, your meat has matured beautifully and the most important thing is that it gives it the chance to equalize so the moisture can get through to to all parts of the meat during that process and that's what i would have done with this piece of meat I'm not not taking away from this gentleman's beautiful um, what, he, what he's created it um, his first copper I mean I don't think my first copper looked like that so kudos to to Michael Ainsworth for for that unfortunately he had to to run away for a bit but you know um, therein lies a, a, another little lesson in that uh, you can salvage this completely and make it I mean I'm, I'm sure it was delicious but you can make it even into a, a more delicious an appealing piece of meat by just doing that little extra bit um, and e equalizing it and uh, you don't even I mean I do that with every single um, uh, a pe um, piece of cured meat that I put in sausages and whole muscle um, uh, meats uh, I take it uh, as soon as it comes out of the chamber I just let it rest for a bit and then I vacuum it and put it back into the fridge um, depending on the, the size of the meat uh, sausages I tend to the thinner sausages I tend to leave for a month to two months uh, sort of more th the thicker sausages I would leave up to three to six months and coppers and pancettas and um, lonzos and uh, um, um, culotelos and that sort of thing I, I would leave up to two years um, so you know even um, um, prosciutto if you debone it and you cut it into usable chunks or sizable chunks that can fit into vacuum bags, you can do the same thing there. So um, again, and, and you can leave that for up to two years in your in your fridge. Again, it, it just becomes a problem for packing. So if you've got a dedicated fridge for that, it's cool. Just always make sure that you mark the date and the time on it uh, when you when you uh, vacuumed it again, and so that you can keep a record and know more or less when to harvest those from your fridge again. Um, and, and you need to experiment with it that that you will you know you'll you'll come up with your your own f f um, flavor profiles and what you like um, I like a more mature sort of umami flavored so I, I tend to leave it in a little bit longer um, and and uh, enjoy it but sometimes you know sometimes we're not patient enough and, and I'm in, invariably I'm uh, I'm uh, um, guilty of that and then I, I dig into my meats far too quickly um so so you know it's something that we're all guilty of but again I, I hope this has been helpful i hope this may help michael ends with um and a lot of you um just to, in dealing with uh, this little problem called uh, case hardening all right thank you very much for listening once again uh give us a subscribe if you like what you see here and also let us know um how you find these videos and if you've got questions questions at preservepigs.com. See you next time. Cheers. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my YouTube channel.